live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are wrapping up day two of wall-to-wall -wall coverage from the Oracle's Modern Marketing Experience show here in Las Vegas has been pretty interesting. A lot of stuff going on. There's a number of these modern experience shows going. Uh, I think they've got sales here and commerce and a whole bunch of things, but we wanted to come get the latest on marketing. And Kevin and the team have really done a good job of really going from kind of a concept to execution and building quite a culture of, uh, of the Oracle Modern uh, Cloud marketing cloud, excuse me, inside of Oracle. So we're excited to have our last guest of the day. Welcome, David Lewis, CEO of DemandGen and James Malarney, uh, VP of Alliances for Oracle. Welcome back, James. And David, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, unfortunately, we're up against the time, as we know, the lights could go off at any time, so uh, we'll just hopefully not have to go in the dark. So right. first off, for people that don't know DemandGen, give them the, the quick uh, 411. Uh, we, uh, we're an agency, a consulting firm. We specialize in helping people with marketing technology. Um, all of our clients are, are using you know, marketing automation, products like Aliqua, and we got started nine years ago because we found that there needed to be a new breed of agency that was specific to helping companies with the use and adoption of marketing technology. And I came from the client side. I was a Aliqua customer, spent three years building marketing in a company called Ellie Mae and saw how just phenomenal the tools were and said, you know, we should go help people uh, with these tools. So people are at all different steps of their journey and, and, and a lot of the keynotes here were old line companies, Chlor, yeah. Uh, Western Digital, um, not Western Digital, excuse me, uh, Western Union, even or older than Western Digital. But from what you've seen across a number of customers in a number of years, what are some of the kind of success factors, the things that you can tell people are going to have success, kind of their motivations, where do they get started, how do they get early wins, how do they kind of build their portfolio of success in this sure. new modern marketing era? M most of the people who invest in a, a marketing automation system like Eloqua are using um, some type of digital marketing email solution today. They're batching and blasting. It's kind of a campaign du jour type mentality. They discover a platform like Eloqua and the marketing cloud and say, wow, this is, this is a way for us to do systemic marketing, nurturing and scoring and, and tightly aligned sales and marketing. So they see it as a tremendous evolution from where they are uh, to where they need to get to. And that evolution, sometimes called a, a transformation, Jeff, that, that's, that's the challenge, right? Because you can do better email marketing. You can do nurturing, but if you don't take the time to really align with sales and marketing and take a platform like Eloqua and, and integrate it properly with the CRM so that, you know, that, that one plus one is three, right. uh, then, then you're not going to get necessarily full value out of it. So um, the, the secret to success is really going all in and having a strategic vision of where you want to take your marketing and transformation of, of your company. Of course, there's the companies, you guys have a lot of clients like Booz Allen Hamilton and companies that have been around like Gartner for a long time, and they're recognizing that the way that they were doing business, the more traditional print, face-to-face -face selling, uh, telephone-based communication, they need to really evolve, and so they're redoing their websites and making lead gen machines, and they're taking tools like Eloqua and Maximizer and um, the digital marketing uh, applications and really going all in and saying, hey, let's make a digital engagement experience for our customers and, and prospects. And where do you find most of them get started? Because you know, there's, there's usually these big infrastructures and spending mechanisms that are built around kind of the traditional marketing efforts that they've been doing. Right. As you mentioned, email was you know, cutting edge yep. a while ago. A and then you had time. kind of these little, little Little projects, and you know, you hire the the, the local kid to, to work on your Twitter, your Instagram, or you know, help us be social, right. and, and it's kind of grown out of that that digital experience. So, how do those two groups come together, and how are you seeing kind of the, the shift of power start to move over to the you know, we can now measure right. uh, our ROI directly. Right. We're not just throwing money into uh, yeah. into a big ad campaign. You know, my my I have two daughters now in college, and and both studying marketing. Uh, you know, my vision and hope is that when they graduate. Uh, marketing is a profit center. It's it's never referred to as a cost center. I grew up in the in the cost center days, right? So it's evolved and it's and it's changed. The um, that's a good that's an unbelievable concept. So do you see people executing that that really significant change of, in a point of view? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at how much has gone digital, SaaS as applications, um, applications like Uber that have you know billion dollar valuations. Marketing is the center of the universe. Marketing is everything. It's demand generation, it's sales, it's commerce, it's, it's engagement. So in many companies today, marketing really is not only the top of the funnel, but all the way down. And so sales, especially in like a considered purchase, 
plays a vital role, but marketing is having so much impact. Upper funnel, lower funnel, and if you read um, you know, the analyst predictions about marketing owning the customer experience by 2020, we've got to have a, a huge you know, base of applications in MarTech for us to have all those engagement touch points. Yeah, and there's been a lot of talk about kind of these micro touch points and, and, and really an evolution of the way, really because of mobile yeah. and, and segmenting our time into smaller and smaller little attention windows. Um, because it is very different, yeah. right? It's not, I'm going to sit down and go through the website and spend 30 minutes and read your PDF and yeah. watch a long video. I mean, take the thousands of people that were here at the conference this week, how many of them did work on a laptop? Most of them did work on their cell phones while they're here, you know, attending the sessions and, and enjoying the content, and yet we were probably responding to campaigns, engaging with products and services, and so we've got to think about mobile. And I mention email a lot because it's certainly one of the value propositions of a platform like Eloqua to do highly effective, automated, systemic email marketing, but the app cloud, which is you know, hundreds of applications that integrate with Eloqua, provide you know, platforms like Print for Less, the PFL guys that do on-demand printing, and there's a whole lot of uh, touch points around SMS and mobile, and so really Eloqua is a platform for communications, and that can take many different forms right. digitally. And that's why you know, we started the firm, was to really help people understand the power of these tools, kind of a little bit Spider-Man, great power, great responsibility. Uh, I put a book together a couple years ago, it's the second edition, Manufacturing hold Demand. The book up, uh, hold it uh, up to the camera. Copy, I'm, I'm on the New York Times best giver list, so <laughs> the, the, the book's available off of our website, they can download a digital copy or uh, pick up a hard copy, but it really is the how-to book of, you know, the wheels are how to align sales and market through systems, and we use a metaphor called the demand factory as a metaphor for explaining what modern marketing is really all about. So give us a little overview on the, on the metaphor. How do you execute it? How do your clients execute it? Sure, um, like a lot of consulting firms, it serves as a framework for us. Uh, the name of the demand factory is Acme, and not just like clever like Wiley Coyote, but it stands for the four areas of the factory, which represents all the disciplines of marketing. So A is acquire, acquiring new leads. Um, C is conversion, which is converting those leads to customers. M is measurement, which you touched on just a little bit. And E is expansion, you know, the lower funnel, getting full value out of every customer. So Acme, you know, acquire, convert, measure, and expand is the name of the demand factory. And the session I did this week about how to be a modern marketer, I did like the Willy Wonka and took them on a tour of this virtual factory and explained all the different things that you need to do, such as in conversion, lead management nurturing, scoring, you know, ways to align sales and marketing through programmatic ways so that a lead that comes in gets ranked priorities, prioritized and then communicated to um, automatically, you know, it's neat. Now the, nur the nurturing piece of the whole process, yeah. um, is that the one that's taken the, the biggest change kind of with social because you know, you get more opportunities to touch, right? You, you get more direct access. We yep. were talking to Clorox obviously earlier, you know, mm -hmm. they, you don't have to wait for them to go buy something at, at, at Safeway or Target. Right. Um, but also now kind of where the, your audience is really kind of controlling the voice. It's the, kind of the old reputation game, right? It's not what you think your reputation is, it's what everybody else thinks. And mm -hmm. now with all of the, the social media and the engagement with the brand and this kind of nurturing aspect, is that kind of where you see the biggest change from kind of classic campaign yes. execution before? Yeah. Traditionally, marketing was very campaign driven. Campaign um, du jour, campaign of the year, you know, what's our big theme, and you know, marketing comes at the beginning of the fiscal year and says, okay, you know, here's what our big brand strategy is and who we're going to be this year, and puts a set of different campaigns together. And that's all top of funnel type um, lead generation. So when I talk about moving from lead gen to lead management, that's where the nurturing comes in. Nurturing's basically saying, hey look, let's create a concert of touch points that is this customer's journey. So first they visit our website, they maybe download a piece of content or respond to a campaign, but let's think about as we're having a conversation, what are the pieces of content that would move them from the age old, you know, saying, uh, you know, uh, AIDA, awareness, interest, desire, action. So let's move them from, I understand a little bit about your product to I really understand the value proposition and can see myself using the product. The nurtures allow that stream of whether it's video, print, email, you know, combination of content, social, so that they go from, I, I know a little bit, to I'm really well educated, and now I'm ready to talk to a salesperson, or conduct a transaction off the website. So that's the core place where we're nurturing really, you know, automates engagement with a conversation that when replicated, ideally personalized using tools like Maximizer to, to you know, test out what is the most effective messaging, but really fine tuning the nurture so it's highly effective, like a traditional sales conversation, but strung out over some time period. 
It's interesting, James, get your take, you know, you used to have such control on the top level messaging and the way that you executed that messaging, right? And now it's it's more of a nurturing and more of an engagement and you have to let go a little bit of control, right? You have to let your yeah. your constituents, your community, ultimately your customers now have a voice, right? You can't just dictate to them. Um, on the other hand, you've got now so much more data, right? You have so much more information about them, so many more opportunities to touch them in ways that you couldn't. It's kind of an interesting kind of yin and yang as this new relationship with your customer that you just you didn't have it before. Right, yeah. well, one of the unique things that Demand Gen also does, which you didn't touch on, but relating to that point as well, is they help uh, our best customers, they're obviously MarTech leader, but navigate the complexity of finding ways to do all these little finite touch points mm -hmm. using all the, you know, all the best parts of what would be in the LumaScape technology network. You know, help the customers find the best breed that fit fit in closely with Eloqua, Oops. Uh, and of course, string it all together, integrate it all together right. to make sure it works properly. So. All right, so we are, we're getting Sorry a message that. from the great voice <laughs> of above, so I think we'll wrap it at that. Yeah. James, good to see you again. Yeah, David, thank you so thanks for, uh, for stopping by and sharing your insight yeah. again. Everybody go out, get the book. Yeah, pick up a copy of the book, demandgen.com. Great read, easy read, flight home, bite, bite sized. Perfect stuff. Size. All right, well, thanks again for All right. stopping by. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you All right, I'm Jeff Frick. We are wrapping up day two at Oracle Modern Marketing Experience. I'm Jeff Frick. Uh, thanks to John, who was on earlier, Peter Burris. Uh, everything will be up on SiliconAngle.tv, also on our YouTube channel. It's, we're right in the middle of the busy season, so keep an eye here, and we'll be at all, all the conferences whether you can make it or not. I'm Jeff Frick signing off from theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thank you.